when building all of my web apps, I kept hearing about Anthropic, more specifically their large language model, Claude 3. I got tens of YouTube comments, tens of email requests asking to add Claude 3 Opus as an option within your AIagent.com. So I explored the API docs, I added it into my bubble app, but I'm gonna be honest, I was a little bit disappointed. This video is gonna show you why. The main argument is that Claude 3 Opus generates more human-like text than GPT-4. So it's better when you're creating social media posts, SEO optimized articles, for chatbots, you name it. I'm going to test and show you guys a few things in Bubble. So if you want to do it for yourself, let's first connect the Claude API. In Plugins, click API Connector, add another API, call this Claude. You need one shared header, and that's content-type and application slash JSON. Now expand the API call. I'm gonna name it text generation, use it as an action, post request, and we're posting to this endpoint. That is api.anthropic.com slash v1 slash messages. We need two more headers. You can add it under the API call if you're gonna have users that use Claude 3, or if you're building it out directly within your app, and it's not gonna change, these values are static, you can add them as a shared header here. So let's just add them as a shared header. The first one is Anthropic dash version. And this value is the year it was released. So 2023-06-01. And then another shared header. This one is called x-api-key. Another word for their secret key. And then the value needs to be your Claude 3 secret key. From your console's dashboard at console.anthropic.com slash dashboard. First, go to settings, plans, and billing. You need to add a valid payment method and then add credits to the account, just like the other APIs we use. Then you can go to API keys, create a key, name it whatever you want, click create key, copy that key, and just paste it into the input box here. For the JSON body, I'll just do this quickly. You'll notice that it's very similar to the other large language models. We need to add a model. We get a system message, a max tokens parameter, and then a messages role where we say we're the user and the content that we provide it. In Bubble, you can put these parameters within caret brackets, and that makes them dynamic within your app so they can be changed when you want to. But let's say I wanted a set model. I wanted Claude 3 Opus. I go to the docs page, go to models, scroll down, grab that model name, and then just paste it in. It is no longer dynamic, so it's gonna disappear here, just like that. I'll uncheck private for system message. I'll write, you are Spanish. And for the content message, this is just for testing. I'm gonna write count to 10. Let's initialize the call. And there we go, this means it's a successful result. I'm gonna hit save. Okay, I made a quick bubble page to test both models. On the left side, we have Claude 3 Opus, and then some text that's gonna generate below. And on the right side, I have GPT-4 Omni with some text that's gonna generate below. The first thing I don't like about Claude 3 Opus is the pricing. We have an input of $15 per 1 million tokens and an output of $75 per 1 million tokens. If you compare that to GPT-4 Omni, it's an input of $5 per 1 million tokens and an output of $15 per 1 million tokens. So a three times cheaper input and a five times cheaper output. Compare that to Gemini 1.5 Flash, one of the newest Gemini models. It's completely free for under 1,500 requests per day, but if you want to pay, it's 35 cents per 1 million tokens for the input, or 70 cents per 1 million tokens if you have longer prompts, and the output is $1.05 per 1 million tokens, and for the longer prompts, it's $2.10. For Gemini 1.5 Pro, there's still a free plan for under 50 requests per day. The prices are a little more expensive, but for shorter prompts, $3.50 per 1 million tokens, 
the output for that call is $1.75. And then with Gemini 1.0 Pro, 50 cents input, $1.50 output. And that's both per 1 million tokens. So it's by far the most expensive model. Does it have the results to back it up? I'm gonna click on the Claude 3 Opus button, go add workflow, click to add an action, plugins, Claude text generation. For the system message, I'm gonna write, write an SEO optimized article about the following topic. And for the user content message, I'm gonna write crypto. Then click to add an action, element action, set the state of the page, Claude 3 Opus state, and the value is gonna be the result of step one, content, first items, text. Let's do the same thing for the GPT-4 Omni button. Then go action, plugins, open AI, text generation. This is showing that we're using GPT-4 Omni in that call. For the system message, I'm going to copy this, paste it in. And for the user content message, copy this, paste it in. So the exact same system prompt, the exact same user prompt. Let's set the state of the page, this time GPT-4 Omni, and the value is the result of step one, choices, first item, message content. Let's hit preview. I'm gonna click Claude 3 Opus first. All right, now let's hit GPT-4 Omni. If we're talking the speed of the API calls, Claude 3 Opus took about 15 seconds longer than GPT-4 Omni. For most cases, this is not a big deal, but if speed is an issue, let's say for something like a chatbot, you're gonna to wanna to go with GPT-4 Omni. By default, it appears that GPT-4 Omni writes in Markdown, which is why we have these stars here. This is supposed to bold the title. I believe the hashtags means it's a heading. And I like that Claude 3 Opus doesn't contain that. So for GPT-4 Omni calls, we're going to need a stronger prompt to tell it to write in a specific format, maybe something like plain text or HTML. I don't like that Claude 3 Opus writes title colon and when I run this test again, it continuously does something that I don't really like. But let's talk about that in a second. First off, in terms of length, GPT-4 Omni is much longer. Look at the difference between the two articles. If I use a word counter, Claude 3 Opus gives us 444 words. GPT-4 Omni gives us 672 words. If I throw the text into an AI detector, First, I'm not sure why a lot of people are scared about this. I don't think it's a big deal that our content is AI generated. Clearly with the results of the autoblogger for a lot of users, the articles are still getting ranked. But if I click detect text, Claude 3 Opus shows a 99.54% AI generated, where GPT-4 Omni shows 94.92%. So it's even lower than Claude 3 Opus. I'm very confused with that argument that Claude 3 presents more human-like text because clearly a website like Zero GPT, one of the first results on Google for AI content detector, is telling us that's not the case. I'm going to change both of these prompts for the next test. I'm going to put write a funny tweet about this topic and the topic again will be crypto. Let's do it for GPT for Omni as well hit preview. Let's test both models again, and then GPT-4 Omni. And look at the difference. Claude 3 Opus was moderated. Sorry, I tried to avoid generating content that promotes or makes light of risky financial speculation like cryptocurrency. I think it's best if I don't write jokes or funny tweets on that topic. Let me know if there's something else I can help with though. That is completely useless. Where GPT-4 Omni wrote, just try to explain crypto to my grandma. Now she thinks Bitcoin is a new app to order cookies. We can debate on how funny that is, but still, hashtag tech savvy, hashtag crypto confusion. If we were building an app, how embarrassing would it be if that was the output for one of our users? I'm gonna change the prompt one more time. Let's get out of the crypto arena so it actually writes something. I'm gonna put write a social media post about this topic, then the topic is pickleball. Let's do the same for GPT-4 Omni. Okay, there we go. Now let's click both buttons again. Here are the two results, Claude 3 Opus, GPT-4 Omni. Sometimes Claude 3 provides text like this in the output. I like to call it task confirmation, where it's telling me this is what the output's about. I already know what I want. 
and it's frustrating that I have to remove this from the output programmatically. But even without that, I still think I like GPT-4 Omni's result better. I like the little emojis here for the bullet points. In my personal experience, for text generation outputs, for the use cases that I've been using them for, so specifically through the API for users to generate text, I prefer GPT-4 Omni over Claude 3 Opus. I've done a lot of reading and many people are saying that Claw 3 Opus is great for coding. I haven't experimented with the coding projects yet, so I don't want to say it doesn't have a full use case. I can see it being so powerful in different arenas. Don't think I'm a hater. I love competition for these large language models. I love that a lot of them are popping up. If you guys can write in the comments below how you use Claw 3 Opus, why you like it better than something like GPT-4 Omni or Gemini or Llama 3, I'd love to read your thoughts. If building apps with the OpenAI API or the Anthropic Claude 3 API interests you, you should check out my online course called How to Build a Custom AI App. I'm going to leave a link to this in the description below. If you want to build AI agents using Claude 3 Opus or Claude 3 Sunnet, we offer that as an option within your AIagent.com. I'll drop a link to a playlist in the description below. Check out the AI agent that interests you the most and start running one for your business today. And if you like this video, I put two more on the screen right now. Both have been catered to your personal YouTube watch history. Give one of them a click for me, give it a watch, and I'll see you in there. Later.